what's going on you guys so it's been a little while mr money one two three five back here yet again for another album review little hurricane gold fever before we really get into this review i'm gonna let y'all take a look at the album that i got in the mail recently that's why this review took a little bit of time to come out because i wanted it to come in the mail because i wanted to show you guys my signed copy of the album um that's a uh, it's tone that's cc she's the drummer he's the guitarist and vocalist um, kind of like the White Stripes, you know, female drummer, male guitar, vocalist, no bassist, you know. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's my signed cover from the band. It's not imprinted on there. That's legit marker scribble. There's, there's like, one of the markers, like, a little bit faded, so I'm pretty sure this is a legit signature. I'm pretty sure that the band actually had their hands on this album. So that's pretty damn cool. Um, I absolutely love this band. And when I saw that package to pre-order this thing where you could get a shirt, a copy of the album signed, and then you could also get something called a little hurry coin. <laughs> Looks like that. Looks like a little tambourine. It's a, you know, legit coin um, that says 2014 with some artwork from the first album on the back. I actually, um, I actually reviewed the album, uh, the Home Wrecker, their first album, um, a few years back. And, um, I've loved this band ever since. Uh, I, get, I really got lucky stumbling upon these guys, and I just think they make some awesome blues rock music, and, uh, I hope I get to see them live before I die someday, because they're just, uh, one of the coolest indie bands that I'm into right now. So let's talk about their brand new album. There's honestly not a whole lot that I can say about this album that hasn't been said about their older album. The band is still playing blues rock music. They haven't, like, gone off and changed their sound or anything like that. They did the one thing, though, that a band like this should be doing, though, on this album, and that's just kind of expand on their sound. They added some extra instrumentation in here. The chick gets to sing a little bit more than she did on the first album. There's a few more songs on this album that go a little bit harder than anything that they did on their first album. There's only one little problem that I have with it, though. It's not the perfect masterpiece that Homewrecker was, sadly. The song Con Man and Sorry Son off of this thing are the two kind of weak spots for me, sadly. The song Con Man kind of drags on a little bit too slowly. Like, if it stayed this pace for, like, the verses and stuff like that, then that would be fine. But, like, it just needs to, like, it needs to pick up some steam, but it doesn't. The entire time it just kind of drags on with this really kind of slow pounding beat, which is fine for a little while, but after a while it starts getting a little repetition in there and it just doesn't sound that good same thing for the song sorry son sorry son is easily the worst of the two i cannot make it through this entire song without skipping it it's just i don't know what happened here but like once again it's just really repetitive i i don't know how to explain it to you guys you gotta hear it for yourself but the repetition in this track and just kind of the melody that's going on in here i'm just not a huge fan of how it flows but I'm going to be honest, everything else on this album, I have absolutely no complaints. The opening song to this thing, Summer Air, is a really great opener to the album. Really fun, really fast-moving track. The song Upside of Down, the second track on this album, is one of the more emotional songs that Little Hurricane have ever written, and I think it's just amazing. The harmony part that Cece has with tone on this track just sounds so beautiful. Her voice on top of his just... Oh, man, it just makes this track. Sheep and Wolves Close, I think, was a really weird pick for the first single, but this is a really good song. I personally think they should have chose the song like No Man's Land for the first single, but maybe they just didn't want to give away one of the best rocking tracks on this album first. Sheep and Wolves Close is still an amazing song, though. The next track, Bowling Water, has a little bit more of that added instrumentation I was talking about with, like, this really cool, really big horn section. This is a really fun song to just kind of sing along to once you get into it. I really enjoy this one. Along with the next song, No Man's Land, which is one of the biggest, hardest rocking songs that Little Hurricane have ever done. The electric guitars just really get ramped up for this track, and they just belting out those vocals. The lyrics on this thing are really powerful. Just a kick-ass track. And then the next song, Bones, one of the more forgettable songs on this album, but still not bad, necessarily. It has a really cool guitar melody to it that I really enjoy. And then the next song, Breathe, is just this really cool duet piece. The same thing like on Crocodile Tears, the opening track on the home record. It's one of the more slower moving songs on this album. It's an acoustic guitar along with really light percussion. Their vocals going back and forth on the lyrics sound absolutely beautiful. The added harmonica in here is just, oh my god, this is one of the best slow songs that Little Hurricane have came up with ever since the song Sweet Pea off of Home Wrecker. 
So that's really great. And then the next two songs are Con Man and Sorry Son, which we've already kind of talked about. The next track, Super Blues, is another hard rocking song. This song and No Man's Land are definitely the huge standouts for me on this thing, just based upon the energy that these tracks have. And then that song just kind of fades its way into the second single of this album, the title track, Gold Fever. And this song is so freaking kick-ass. I love the melody to this song. I love how upbeat and just pumping the beat is on this track. It's just a blues masterpiece, really. The lyrics call back to an older time of gold mining and shit like that. It just makes this album. It's so cool. And then we have a really danceable track for the last song on this album, Grand Canyon. It has some amazing lyrics, an amazing melody, a beat that just makes you want to get up and sway around and stuff like that. Just a great way to end this record. So I gotta say, from one kind of disappointing to song to one song that's kind of really disappointing, this album, I still have to give it a full recommendation, really. While it's not as perfect as Homewrecker is for me, personally, I feel like this is another batch of songs that goes great into their catalog, another album that I'm going to be listening to like crazy, and something that I cannot deny is one of my favorite albums of the year. If you haven't heard of this band, I really suggest you check them out. They only have two albums, and I think they're both on iTunes right now. So please, go check out this band if you haven't heard of them. Mr. Money, one, two, three, five. I'll see you.